So Mark, uh, could you tell uh, what kind of, of uh, activities One Way Church has just now in Uganda? Okay, uh, I'm really so much grateful for what One Way Mission is doing in Uganda. For the first time in 2011, uh, since 2011, we've been holding annual meetings, uh, those are conferences, whereby all our pastors from all our networking churches in over 80 districts, they come for like a kind of a retreat, like a kind of envisioning seminar as we start a new year. So we've been holding such conferences for the last many years since 2011 mm. up to this very year because we had one this year and we had over we hosted over 750 786 church leaders coming all over the country and we hope god spoke to our hearts to reopen the wells as it is written genesis 26 from verse 18 up to 19 then in the year 2000, uh, around 15, then there came in the sponsorship program. Mm. And we started with few children. As we talk now, over 200 children are already enrolled and mm. fully sponsored by One Way Mission mm. in Uganda. And some of these children have gone through the primary level up to almost. We Next year we'll be having one of our first children to be sponsored in the university and that is Natchisa Ruth. Mm. She will be joining university next mm. year. There are around 52 of our children who are in secondary education, mm. in senior one, senior two, senior three, senior four, and senior mm. five. And they are really doing very, very well. Mm. And uh, two, three of them, they are in vocational studies, and more four who are already in the university. This one came in on the course. So we do the sponsorship there and we do medical care for all our sponsored children. Mm -hmm. And at times there are some other people in the community that we see we need to take care of, like the widows and the old people and also other needy ones mm -hmm. in, the, in our church. So we sometimes take them to the clinic and we provide medical care. So we also do like um, in the sponsorship program we have... Uh, like skill development. We have taught our children with the computer skills and making simple crafts like bags and maybe we are soon doing shoes. Yeah. So that is also another program that One Way Mission is doing in Uganda. We not only do that, but still there is also the elderly and the widows program. We are funded fully by One Way Mission. We do some food packages to these homes. But still, I cannot fail to mention the provision of clean water in different communities. Mm. This is a program that started in the year 2017 when a team of, from One Way Mission visited Uganda. And we had to wait for our sponsored child for over three hours who had gone to have water from a nearby swamp. She went around in the noon and she came back like five in the evening. Mm. It's almost like something was strange to us. But even when she came back with the water, the water was very poor. You could not mm. even use it for anything. Mm. But can you imagine that in that color, which was yellowish, and one of her siblings had to come up with a cup and drink that water. Mm. So since then, One Way Mission has blessed over 24 villages with clean water with yeah. power holes. So we are really so much grateful. And there is also a lot of things that has been happening around in the community. Mm. So One Way Mission is like a blessing to Uganda. So um, God has blessed your uh, ministry uh, so much. Uh, could you tell some success stories? Yeah, success stories. One, I'll start with myself. I, I'm one of the success stories. I can't mm. say, like I said, mm. that One Way Mission has given me a big platform and to interact with different mm. communities, like different people from different cultures mm. and areas. Number two, when you look back, when we started with the sponsorship program, some of all our sponsored children had no mattresses at all. People were sleeping on mats, 
rugs and sacks and tarpaulins. Mm. But now we have given them mattresses, they have blankets, they have bed sheets, they have mosquito nets. And then in our village in Imulete, only like we are only two young boys who are done with their primary level. And that is our current pastor, Pastor George. He had finished primary seven and his elder brother. But now you cannot imagine that we have over 50 of them and more who have gone through the education system. The 200 in the sponsorship, they are already there. They, are, they know how to read and write, and at least they can speak some good English, mm. at least that. And even the primary school is supported because we have some teachers that we pay for their salaries there. Yeah. And at times, we, when we mission sends in money and we buy food for the schools, that is Agape and in Kaweri. So there is a lot of things that One Way Mission is doing there. Yeah. But also from the sponsorship view, we are seeing life which was at a risk. There's now hope for future. Yeah. Children no longer fall sick, and once they fall sick, definitely we take them to the clinic. So yeah. there is that assurance that once I fall sick, there is medical care. Yeah. That so, is so you have still challenges also there? Yeah, there are many of them. Yeah, we yeah. still have. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What is the biggest challenge just now? Uh, you know, as a ministry, like w from the church view, I think there is a need for more churches and the trainings, like I said. Yeah. But still, when you look at where our network goes, the networking yeah. churches, some of these places we cannot do maybe conferences there due to mm. the maybe one, the water sources they have, mm. you cannot stay there like even a single night. So there is a need for more clean water. Mm. There is a need for more children to come to the sponsorship group mm. because we are having over 200, but when you go around the community, there are so many children who can't go to school yet. Yeah. And these of, some of these are refugees from Congo and Rwanda. And I guess there are still more refugees coming in Uganda Mm. because there are a lot of political restrictions in, the, in Rwanda, maybe that are not favoring them. Yeah. And Uganda is a free country, so they feel they want to come to Uganda. Yeah. And then there comes also a need for food. We mm. cannot, mm. food always is a challenge to our schools and maybe mm. to some of the families. So maybe we feel we can do some farming at a large scale. Mm. Yes. So, so we can say that, that the one-way ministry, it has affected strongly to local people. No, that slowly, but still the need is there. Yeah, there is still big needs. Yes, there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so, but uh, uh, what could be the biggest need? Uh, the biggest need now is if God opens up doors for us and like we get more children coming to the sponsorship yeah. Because we see and we have a threat. There is a saying in our local language that if you have a basket of tomatoes mm. and then you happen to have one rotten tomato in that big basket, mm. it will spoil all the whole basket. Yes. Yes. So we have a fear that if like we only have 200 and there is another commit of over 500 who are still who can't read and do mm. the writing, mm. then that will be like we will have to the whole basket may end up being damaged. So we need the, that there is a need for more sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Number two, as a ministry, we currently have two challenges. Our current church is full and sometimes people sit outside. Mm -hmm. And when it is like a rain season, they can't come to church because they have nowhere to sit. Mm -hmm. And then we pray that if we can reach more other 50 villages with clean water, at least in the areas where our churches are, we can bless them with clean water. I cannot forget to mention the need for transport. Yeah. We always spend much money while doing our missions. Yeah. And we had only a small mission car which Wilson was using. Mm. It is now completely down. We cannot do any other repair on it. Mm. So we need much prayers that maybe we get another mission van that we can use mm. maybe during our missions. And maybe like when we have a big mission tree, a mission uh, people who are coming from one way mission, mm. when they come in a big number, we don't need to hire a, yes. a van for them. We can use our mm. own yeah, van yeah. because yeah. it is also costing once they are coming, mm. 
Mm. We see we spend a lot of money on hiring mm. a van. Mm. Also, there comes a need for land. We are doing some kind of farming with our 16 acres that we have now, mm. but we feel we can do some more farming. Mm. Why do we need to do farming? We see we cannot lie on donations. We need to uh, locally generate mm. income there. Mm -hmm. So we want to embrace more of the coffee farming mm. in our community, mm. being the major cash crop in the country. Mm -hmm. We think we can have some money there and support more of these programs. Mm. So there is a need for more land, mm. like I can say like 200 acres if possible, we can have them. And we do food for cropping, we can do some mm -hmm. maize, beans, mm. and maybe we give food to our schools and mm. to these families that we support, but still we can do uh, coffee farming, we can do some fruits there, we can do some Pigali, we can do some beekeeping. These mm. are some of the things mm. that mm. need less input, but you can have mm. a good mm. uh, harvest. Mm. Yes. How do you see the future of one way in general in Uganda? Uh, generally, I see that we are taking a right route. Mm. And I see that in time to come, there will be like big harvests mm. in, our, in our mission. Mm. Because I see the 200 children, once they go through the education system, mm. maybe from primary up to their level of mm. education, some will go to the university, some may mm. be to the vocation, some may be to other institutions. Mm. I see that in years to come, mm. we see the impact of one-way mission in the communities there. Mm. We'll have, these children will come back and serve in the local church. They will come back and serve in the community. Mm. They will come back and maybe improve on the standards in their homes where they are coming from. So, and we see that in the future to come, there will be a great impact that one main mission will have caused in the community. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what would you like to say to Finnish people who may wondering if they should participate to Uganda uh, ministry in somehow? I want to officially welcome everyone to come and work with us in Uganda. Mm. Because there is a reading in the book of Ecclesiastes, which states in chapter four, verse from verse nine up to 12, that two are better than one. Mm. I really definitely want to say, once we work together as a team, mm. we can definitely have big harvests, mm. like the Bible says, no one can do it alone. And I can assure you one thing that we are so much keen and we are so much responsible that we want to take care of every thing that is entrusted to us to see that we mm. use it to do the will of God. Mm. So we are much, we pray to God that we be much of integrity, we be much of a transparent and that we can be accountable mm. for every thing that is entrusted to us. So please, we welcome you to come. Mm. Don't fear, we, the door is open. <laughs> we want to welcome everyone, yes. Yeah, I, I suppose sometimes Finns, they must be a little bit afraid mm. to travel in Africa or in Asia or mm. some uh, yes. exotic place. They haven't ever been there, yes. but um, can they really trust and come there? Yes, there are no restrictions for people coming in Uganda. Mm. Yes, one, the government allows all mm. people to come and mm. maybe work mm. with mm. us there. And I want to assure you for the few experience of the people that have been coming there, mm. they have enjoyed and mm. they have mm. liked to come more. Yeah, so yeah. This was that, also my experience. It, yes. it was good experience to visit once in Uganda. Mm. And, and uh, I think, uh, your food is good, yes. it is healthy, yeah. and, and, and uh, your um, weather is relatively nice, of yes. course, depending on of the year. Mm. But there are several, um, I, 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 I don't see any obstacles to yeah. come if God is calling. Yeah. Yes, there are no obstacles. Yeah. Yes. And the community is open to yeah, everyone. I believe. And there are no insecurity, I think, in our country. Yeah, once you are there, you are safe. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, welcome. about this interview. Thank you so much. <laughs>